In the last couple of lectures, we have seen Java futures in action. In this lecture, let's take a look at the limitations of Java futures. In most cases, programming with Java futures works fine as long as you're doing an imperative style of software development. But if your entire architecture is based on reactive style programming, then you will find Java futures to be limiting. Reactive style of development is heavily based on asynchronous coding, and the purpose of this is to improve the scalability of the application. That leads us to the obvious question. What exactly do I mean by imperative style or reactive style? The imperative style of programming is what we have been doing for decades. Use of if-then-else, while loops, for loops, blocks, convenient stack traces for debugging, all of these constructs we have grown to love very much. An imperative style of development will look like the following. Pretty self-explanatory. The downside here though is that the thread blocks till all of the methods have finished processing. Now, why is that such a big problem? In highly scalable applications, we cannot afford the threads to block because it affects scalability. To correct this problem, reactive style programming has become quite popular in recent years. The main purpose of reactive style development is to avoid blocking in our code. If we do reactive style programming, the code will look something like this. Mind you, this is pseudocode, not Java code. The screen shows a pseudocode where a reactive style pipeline is started for a user request. The thread which handles the user request simply specifies what needs to be done as part of the pipeline to fulfill the user request and then exits without waiting for the database or service requests to complete. In other words, the sole purpose of the user request thread is simply to construct the pipeline. The individual parts of the pipeline would be running on separate threads and it would be the job of the pipeline manager, whoever that may be, to orchestrate these asynchronous parts and then send the combined result back to the user. That's pretty much the reactive style of programming. We are doing this so that we do not block the user thread. As you might expect, this is a fundamentally different way of programming and requires a different way of thinking. The biggest problem with Java Futures is that it's not designed to handle reactive style architectures. We cannot create a pipeline of asynchronous activity in a nice, fluent way. We simply cannot do what we see on the screen. Another downside of Java Futures often mentioned is that there is no way to complete the future using its API. The future interface does not have a method to complete it. Now, what exactly does that mean? On the screen, you see the code to submit a callable. Now, when will the future.get actually return? When the task is complete. In other words, when the future is complete. That's the term which is often used. The future is complete. When dealing with Java futures, it's the executor service which completes the future when the callable task completes. We cannot, for example, say future.complete. There is no such method. Now, this may or may not be a problem at all. You can decide. The last argument against Java futures is that it has limited functionality. There are only a handful of methods in the future interface in comparison to completable future. However, the argument could also be made that the interface completable future has way too many methods. In short, Java futures work just fine for imperative style software development. If you happen to be a big fan of reactive style programming, then you should look at its famous cousin, the mighty completable future.